At this point, you've probably seen problem 10 on the homework, which is billed as a challenge problem, because it's kind of interesting that we haven't really dealt with the idea of a circular surface here. But the secret to this is really, this is kind of like a ramp problem, but the angle here is changing. And in a ramp problem, it's fixed. In fact, we want to find out what that angle is. So let's take a look at our two bodies in the problem. So that sounds familiar. Here's a cube, our lovely Newtonian cube, and here's the bowl. And I can write down the free body diagrams for this. See a pattern with how we do these things yet? So let's write down what we got. Well, there's a weight on the cube, mc times the gravity. And there's a force from the bowl on the cube. Now the thing is, with this force, we don't know the angle. Uh, but we can leave it as an unknown through the powers of algebra. There's my angle theta as defined. There's a parallel line here. I'm sort of looking at this line here. Alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. It's like the one thing I remember from high school geometry. So now we've got that angle there. And that is the force of the bowl on the cube. Now for the bowl. We've got the mass of the bowl times gravity is the weight. And then we've got the force that it's getting pushed on right there. There's my F going off in the x direction. And we also have the force of the cube on the bowl. And so we know the force on the cube and the bowl. And this angle here is theta. And that's because I think about that as if this angle here, theta, goes to 0, and it's sitting right at the bottom of the bowl. The force of the cube on the bowl would be lined up here in the vertical. So this angle would, here, would go to 0 here. There's more uh, geometric ways of solving that. But for my purposes, this gets the problem solved. Now, the final thing we really need for this problem is the condition that for this coordinate system, the sum of the forces in the x direction for the cube is going to be equal to the mass of the cube times some acceleration. And then because it doesn't move up or down in the vertical direction, stays fixed with respect to the cube, the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be 0. This also happens to be true for the bowl the sum of the forces in the x direction for the bowl is equal to the mass of the bowl times the same acceleration as in the cube. That's going to give us the link. And then we're going to go ahead and say the sum of the forces for the y direction for that is going to be 0. Now we can go ahead. We don't know the angle theta. We just leave it as a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and do the sum of the forces for the cube is in the x direction. So I'm going to call this equation 1. Again, and this will be equation 2. So for equation 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that um, mc times a cube mass times the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, here, that's this component, uh, f of bc times the sine of the angle. That's the x direction. And there's no other forces. Cool. Uh, I'm going to give this 3. I'm going to say that from equation 3, we know that 0, that's the acceleration, is equal to the force BC projected in the cosine, FBC cos theta, minus MCG. Now, this is kind of nice because I can look at this and say, ah, oh, I could probably solve this for what the magnitude of FBC is. Um, and sort of pop it up here and get some expression in relationship for a and between a and g. But I never told you what the acceleration was. So we're going to have to go over here to the bowl, do a similar setup, solve for the acceleration, and carry that result on back here into this setup. 
Now, the final thing to note is that I always have Newton's third law, which says the magnitude of the force of the bowl on the cube is equal to the magnitude of the force of the cube on the bowl. We've already taken care of the opposite directions here, and we're going to do the geometry to get that right and project it into this coordinate axis. But the magnitudes are the same. Ooh, I don't know what that button did, but it was not cool. So the magnitudes are the same because of Newton's third law. All right, that's all I'm going to set up here. We'll come back after the homework is due, and I'll walk you through it all the way to the bitter end.